Okay. Welcome back, everyone, here as I am now with Coach Longenecker of the Waterloo Lady Vikings. Went over Sebring Trojans here, 49-13. Coach, another great defensive performance from your girls. I mean, they did it again, like I said earlier in the season, against McDonald. Talking about that, uh, with this team defensively having hold, held two, two opponents now to such low scores and throughout the season, how proud are you of the defense? And with a night like this, how much does defense play a part in a victory? Big time. I, um, one, really like how we're playing defensively. Our kids are uh, uh, really buying into what we're doing. And um, uh, just, you know, tonight I thought that was a key. We just wanted to uh, we wanted to defend hard. We just talked about defending hard. And uh, I think our kids are helping each other a lot. We communicate really well on the floor. And um, uh, it's been fun to watch. You know, that's really kept us in games uh, that were close this year. So proud of that. Rose Kautz gets player of the game tonight, not only for scoring 19 points, but for really getting that offensive tempo and rhythm in flow, because mm -hmm. not the hottest night from three-point land tonight, and you'll, you'll have those yeah. nights. How important is it for Rose being that primary point guard to really get this offense going when three-point shots aren't working out, just trying to get the engines yeah. moving? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, I thought in the second quarter uh, we got our transition action uh, happening a little better, and, and Rose is almost always responsible for that. Uh, if the ball is not coming down in her hands, it's probably Lily or, or Kara uh, is, is on a breakout or something. But uh, Rose is uh, getting a great feel for uh, uh, finding, finding people and finding space. And, uh, yeah, she's, I'm glad she plays for us. Lone? <laughs> I, I would be, too. I can't imagine why anyone wouldn't be. Olivia Kolstrup is your lone senior yeah. on this today. And, I mean, interesting story coming over from Denmark. And when we had a chance to talk with her, I mean, her, nothing but good things to say about the program. Nothing to good, but good things to say just about the school in general. Yeah. What does it mean to you being a coach that you have such an influence on these players' lives outside of the sport of basketball and yeah. so much so going forward that they yeah. take life lessons away from you? It is. It, it's, you know, we – we never know uh, when uh, we're going to get a foreign exchange student. I think this is the third one we've had uh, since uh, I've been here. And, and it's just neat now that, uh, you know, when you see an, en an email come in from the Netherlands or Denmark and, you know, so these kids still keep in touch. And, and I think that's pretty cool. And uh, um, each time the three kids that we've had uh, have been great kids, uh, maybe not uh, uh basketball talent wise uh, you know that they're going to give us a lot of minutes on the floor but uh, we they've, they've just been embraced in our basketball family and they've, they've made us better people because of who they are talking about that Waterloo family it's it's a tight-knit group and we know they love their basketball I know they're going to love this Monday matchup too yeah. coach. you got this Jackson Milton team the the one team that you have to still play twice on the season right the one team that's still kind of threatening that MVAC conference right. title what kind of energy is going to need to be brought in? What are you guys going to need to do to carry that momentum into Monday's home matchup versus the Blue Jays? Well, um, very good team. Uh, they've got some some uh, some great personnel. We're we're very similar in some ways, uh, roster size and uh, you know personnel. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a great matchup. Pat uh, does a great job there. His kids play some uh, ter tremendous defense, and um, you know they've scored a bunch of points a few times this year. So. Uh, um, you know, we're, yeah, it's, um, you know, we got COVIDed out the first trip around. And uh, uh, so, um, you know, looking forward to this. Final question for you. As we know, tournament time is rapidly approaching. Where do you as a coach try to find that balance of keeping the team competitive, focusing, obviously, because you're still in the mm -hmm. conference run, mm -hmm. but also not letting them look too far ahead at that tournament yeah. as you, you're going to have the seed and you're going to know you're drawing yeah. here yeah. prior to the end of the season? Yeah. Well, I, I think that, you know, naturally everybody looks ahead a little bit. But for for us, literally, and it probably sounds a little cliche, we have really emphasized one day at a time. And, and uh, regardless of who the next opponent is, and, you know, that's that's still who we're, uh, what we're doing. We have a, a, a brutal stretch coming up here. And, uh, you know, we can't look too far ahead. Sure, the tournament's exciting, and we're, we're excited for the draw and to see how that plays out. But uh, there is a lot of basketball to be played before that the first tournament ball goes up in the air. And we're excited to join you guys along for a lot of that ride as Waterloo are winners of a Baker's Dozen 13 straight now as they go to 13-1 and one on the year at another win in that MVAC Scarlet side over Sebring. 49-13, to 13. Coach Longenecker, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, I appreciate it.